Um, welcome back after the coffee and tea break. I think we all enjoyed it. I know of a few people who said those onion rings were their reason for coming. Um, all right, first of all, as you will be aware, uh, tomorrow we are hosting workshops. So I am just going to give our two workshop presenters the opportunity to briefly say a few words about, about those workshops. Um, the first workshop will be Elan, for, and that's Heather Brooks. Work, okay. Um, hi everyone, so I'm gonna run this Elan workshop. It's gonna be the fairly, the basics of it tomorrow. Now Elan is, is a linguistic annotator and what you do is you import a video into a template which you can then analyze linguistic and uh, multimodal behavior, so gestures as I'm gesturing now and talking and you can look at it in relation to speech. You can also analyze um, you know, visual data like you know, a news presenter reading and gesturing or anything like that. So if you're interested in doing that kind of thing, um, then it may be a useful tool for you. It's the standard international tool for all linguists now and, and people who work on visual data, especially gesture, sign languages, and so on. But if you are interested in text mining, it's not for um, text. It's for natural human interaction, okay? You can analyze just um, audio data. You can import a WAV file and, and analyze audio data on it, but then you would rather do, if you're gonna do phonetics, sociophonetics, then you rather use PRAT, which is a whole nother story. So just so that you don't come and, and expect to be able to look at texts because that's not really going to be able to, uh, it's not really for that. Well, I have never heard of anyone using it for that, but who knows? Okay, so thanks, everybody. Um, thank, thank you, Heather. Just and so you don't waste your time in case it's not for you. Thank you, Heather. And for those interested in text, uh, our presenter there, Menu, is going to tell you a bit more. Uh, if you do want to do something with text, <laughs> come to my workshop. <laughs> um, no, so <laughs> I think my, my workshop is really um, for those who realize that you can actually search in text, and I think most of us have done that at some point. Um, but if you just use regular search functions in the tools that we use, or like your word proce processor, you might realize that some things are actually quite difficult to search for, or you want to search for all occurrences of something. Um, so if you just do simple search, then you might run into kind of limitations. What I will try to do in this workshop is to kind of expand a little bit on what you can do with searching. Um, so you can search for more complex things, you can search for dates, you can search for telephone numbers and stuff like that in your text. Uh, and at the end, I'll also try to explain how you can then kind of uh, really extract that information. So it's like the beginnings of a bit of text mining. Um, it won't be extremely difficult, so there's no programming involved. You know, it's not the hard stuff, it's really you can all do this even using the tools that you're already using now, but you're just kind of taking that next step with additional functionality that's already there that you might not know yet. So if you do want to do text, come to my workshop. If you don't want to do text, but do audio, and then you need to go to Heather's uh, workshop. Thanks. Thank you, Heather and Menu. I'm sure you'll have uh, excellent attendance at your workshops. Then our next presenter does not require any introduction, but it is the inimitable Masibidi Setaka. Thank you so much, colleagues. Um, my name is Masvi Sitaka, and I am the digital humanities researcher specializing in Sesotho at Sadila, which is the South African Center for Digital Language Resources. And I must say that um, I really feel honored to be talking about Sadila in the presence of Prof. Ru, because he is 
Yes, a round of applause, please. Because it is due to his hard work and dedication that we are actually here and talking about uh, Sadila and DH Ignite and everything. About 30 years or so of work that actually got uh, into this project. So thank you very much, Prof. Okay, today I will be talking about um, uh, Sadila's role in supporting digital humanities. And I think that um, with all the discussions that we have had, uh, some of the participants were actually noting on how actually uh, Sadila can be able to, to bring about computational aspects to the humanities and social sciences. And that is exactly what Sadila is doing. As I'm sitting there, I'm thinking that, okay, you're mentioning that, but yeah, we, we are already playing a, a, some kind of role in, in higher education. And you will see that with um, some of the projects that we have. And um, you can also go to our website as well where you, you will get more information about everything that we get to do, how we get to involve higher education, uh, students, um, lecturers, uh, the, the academia in, uh, uh, in general. So um, for many people, I must say that Sadila, sometimes it's still a bit foreign because they do not exactly understand who we are, what we do, and like sometimes even how, why and how we exist. Some even are hearing the, uh, the name Sadila for the first time. And sometimes uh, we always feel that it's very important that we have a, we, we actually introduce who we are so that the wider particip uh, participants can actually understand exactly who we are and why we actually exist. We are the South African Center for Digital Language Resources we, and we are supported by DSI, which is also uh, under, under the South African Research Infrastructure Roadmap. And we focus on all the official South African languages. So what Sadila does, we, uh, we work on research and development of language technologies and uh, language related studies under the, under the humanities and social sciences. So what we do, we support uh, cre uh, uh, and create, manage and distribute digital language resources for all the 11 official languages in the country. And most importantly, our resources are free to use. So once you get to our website, you're able to download um, software or resources that you would like to use in your research or um, a, if you want a workshop or something, you are able to request those from us. But these are some of the things that we'll discuss um, as we go along. So Sadila um, runs two programs, which is the digitization and the digital humanities uh, uh, program. Digital humanities, which is why we are here. Um, so the digitizing, uh, digitization create, uh, uh, program, we work on relevant digital uh, uh, data, speech, or multimodal resources. And this is where now we get to, to create different, uh, different applications that are able to understand and read um, all the 11 official languages. And when you go to our website, you get to find um, exactly that. And if you find that there is something that um, you would like to use, you are also able to download that. And if, if you are not, then you can also um, send us an email. Then we can be able to give you access to the resources that you want. And under the digital humanities uh, uh, program, this is where now we build a computational capacity more especially for the humanities and social uh, scientists. This is where now um, uh, DH Ignite comes in and everything else that we do at Sadila in terms of now having workshops that cater for all the 26 universities uh, uh, in the country so that we are able to build capacity on, on, uh, on the level of, of students in higher education, their lecturers and to the whole world of academia in the South African uh, fraternity. And in a way, you could say that Sadila is actually uh, being an enabler for, for DH uh, graduates for future jobs that, are still going to, uh, that we are still going to create. Because in most cases, you would find that what we are dealing with, it's not something that is readily known, but DH is still a fairly new field in the country. 
So what we are trying to do is to bring it closer to our South African people so that they, they can also, especially the humanities and social scientists, that they can also understand that even if I'm a human uh, scientist, but I can also still be able to, but I can still also be able to work and understand a bit of code. I don't have to be a computer scientist to actually be able to understand exactly what is going on here. And this is where now um, you will see uh, during the course of, 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 of my, sli my slides where I'll be talking about the carpentries and everything that we, uh, we, we have. But Sadila is hosted at the Northwest University and um, we work closely with various other universities um, Within the, within the country, and we have different nodes at different uh, universities. And um, I think the last one that we just, we, uh, we just had is the Child Language um, Development uh, Node, which is at Stellenbosch. And um, we have the, the, uh, a node at the University of Pretoria, which is the digi dig Digitization Node. Ah, it's a tongue twister. And then um, I, we, have a, we have a note at the University of South Africa. We have the CSIR uh, note, and uh, where we are based at the Northwest University, um, we also ha uh, that is also where, where we are hosted. And there is a note there as well uh, named CTEXT. And then we have the Interinstitutional Center for Language Development and Assessment, which is a conglomerate of different universities actually working on, on this note. So what we do at Sadila, we do a broad um, a national enablement in a way that um, we do not have, we are an, an academic institution in a way, but we do not have students actually coming into our institution. But what we do, we actually um, interact via awareness sessions that we have. We have workshops. Uh, that uh, part, uh, participants, scholars, anyone in, in academia can actually can actually um, ask uh, for a workshop, and then we are able to deliver that and um, host uh, the kind of workshop that they would uh, like. And the, those workshops are actually listed on our website. Uh, once you go uh, to salira.org, then that list uh, will, will be there. Then you get to decide which workshop you want for your students or yourselves. And um, what, uh, what is important is that at Sadila, um, we get, as researchers, we get to be exposed to a lot of, to a lot of digital methodologies that, uh, we, that, uh, that we are actually supposed to be knowledgeable about. And once we get exposed to those, this is where now we get to teach other people. This is where the capacity building actually comes in. We get uh, to be taught by experts, in a, in a certain in a certain field, a certain tool, and then we get to take that um, uh, the knowledge that we have, and then we pass it on, but not keep it to us. So this is why now, when catering for all the 26 um, universities in the country, we now go at different ways in terms of in terms of a workshop arrangement, and then we work on exactly. Um, trying to capacitate, trying to build a digital humanities in the country. So um, we actually go beyond academia. We, no, we are not only working with, 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 with scholars, but also we must remember that as much as uh, we are a, a digital language center, the, 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 the language, the language aspect of it actually also belongs to the community, which is why we had um, a language celebrations uh, in 2019, um, where we had to visit uh, different communities in the country talking about language and language scholarship and everything that is related to language and digital humanities. And other areas of engagement as well is when we are doing uh, trainings to, uh, uh, to become uh, Wikipedia authors, translating content into African languages. And I think um, uh, the Wikipedia speaker who was here yesterday did mention that, our, for example, Isindebele is one of the least actually 
it's like it does not exist on Wikipedia because it is not available. This is where now we also attend such trainings and also um, us as well to also capacitate other people as well in terms of what is available out there. How can you actually be able to be an author on Wikipedia so that your language can also be discovered? So I mentioned a workshop request uh, quite a few times. You, when you go to our website, this is um, a, a page that you will be met with. And under all this, uh, under all this point, uh, data analysis and uh, annotation tools, digital humanities, corpus creation, all those. There are also a number of other, uh, uh, other there are also a number of other tools that fall under this, uh, this, this point that you can be able to choose a workshop that you want, a workshop that you think your, your students will actually be interested in. And then you go to our, uh, to our website and then you request for a workshop and then we walk you through everything that is needed for us to be able to help you host a workshop. And um, part of a, a, a understanding and and trying to bring digital humanities into the whole space. We have the escalator program, which uh, my colleagues have already um, talked much about uh, uh, today. But then this is where now uh, we try as Sadila to also build a computational capacity in humanities and social scientists. So the escalator program is a branch uh, in a way that it's an extension branch of, of Sadila that actually comes to the society, comes to the, to the scholars at different universities to say, um, we have a, 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 a space for you to learn about uh, computational methods. And this is where now also we have the, uh, the DH Ignite as well. Another space which I would like to talk about is the carpentries. At Sadila, we work with the carpentries, the carpentries, which is an international organization. And this is where now, um, Everyone who wants to learn about coding and programming, the carpentries uh, is just there to help you develop and uh, teach on data skills that are needed for research. For example, you could be taught um, how to clean your data or uh, how to collect your data, and also still being taught that whatever you do in, in, in whatever space that you are taking with research, make sure that you keep your, uh, your raw data raw. So most of these tools, they will actually um, teach you exactly how to clean your data, but you need to know exactly how you want a, how you want a tool to help you. And um, one of uh, uh, our MCs yesterday mentioned that you need to know exactly how you want a, how the, you need to have a question. And then once you know what you want, then someone else might also already know a tool that will be able to help you. And this is where now even the carpentries uh, come into place. And, this, and here we get to train um, a... We get to train anyone who wants to get involved, and then uh, we host workshops. And the workshops, um, we can also host them at the different universities. And then what happens is you ask for a workshop, and on that workshop, um, as, the as the organizing team, we get to find people who will be there to actually teach at, at your workshop. But there are certain responsibilities that you need to take in terms of trying to find a venue, making sure that um, the, uh, maybe you get a computer lab in case someone who wants to join does not have a laptop or something of that sort. Because we are talking, we are talking coding, we are talking data analysis, data cleaning, and everything. So we need a computer. Okay. In conclusion, um, I can sum up this talk by saying that. Sadila is indeed working towards improving DH scholarship um, in the country, and considering that uh, Sadila is actually the first of its kind in, in the country and actually even in Africa. So I think we should really take um, the initiative and run with everything that Sadila has to offer us, including all the programs that uh, previous speakers have spoken about, and also make sure that we introduce this to, to, to our students when we get back home and not keep the knowledge to ourselves. And um, 
capacity building is very, very important to us because once I know something, I get to pass it on to someone, and that is exactly what Sadila is all about. Also including the escalator program and everything that is DH, DH related, because whatever knowledge that we have, we get to impart it to everyone who wants a who wants additional knowledge or who is still a novice and does not know anything, but we try and have that safe space, a community that the person can learn from. And anyone can uh, request a, a, a workshop on our website. Um, anyone can be part of the escalator program or the carpentries program. And remember that um, everything that we do, we are doing it for the good of South Africans for the good of um, academia, for the good of everyone who wants to learn, and it is free of charge. Should there be any questions, any queries, or comments, or you want to know more about um, a, a escalator, my colleagues are there. If you want to know more about uh, the carpentries, um, I'm also here, and yeah, thank you so much.